And this is the long awaited square shallow dive. We're going to be looking at some numbers, some trajectories, some CEO risks, some industry stuff, some directional stuff, some numbers, some bar charts, and see if we can come up and answer the question Is Square a buy? <laughs> well, this is what the chart looks like from 2016 and when it comes to the price. Um, obviously, experienced a big growth phase here, and that's actually detectable in the revenue side of things. The first thing before I look at any company is I like to look at this little chart here, this little square, which shows the revenue and earnings of the company. It looks like the revenue has been growing quite exponentially. The earnings side, not so much, but that's kind of irrelevant for a growth company. Um, a quick look at the analyst just to see if there's some red flags I have to worry about. Looks like majority of them are in the buy column. Not that this matters too much when it comes to money or money generating companies. <clears throat> the ones that have serious revenue and earnings. But let's start with the financials. And also I'm going to compare it to PayPal because you can't have a conversation about Square without mentioning PayPal, right? So going over to the quarterly tab gives me some little more dimension to the numbers. Looks like revenue has been growing at a steady clip here. And not only in 2020, but 2021 as well. And it looks like this year's going to continue its growth too. Um, now on the expenditure side, it looks like they've had a outsized operating costs as of late. I'm not sure if they're expanding into something or whether it's something regulatory. If you know, please comment in the, uh, in the section below. So it looks like the operating income is actually a loss in the last three quarters. So uh, they're spending more money than they're getting. I don't know if it's that due to the growth or what, but the revenue is growing quite substantially, so I can't fault them. Now, the shares outstanding, it looks like uh, as of recently, they've also started to dilute the shares. So be careful if you're a share owner, shareholder holder, share share owner holder shareholder owner anyway <laughs> it's, uh, if you own shares of square you may want to keep buying them because if you own 400 and uh, if you own 581 shares it's now worth as much as 430 why did i say that backwards anyways they have a ton more shares than they did in 2015. That's fine. And only a little bit more than they did in 2021 in December. So just keep buying. If you owned 430 shares, you now want to own 581. Let's put it that way. In order to keep the same percentage of the company that you once had. So just be really aware of that um, outstanding share count. All right. Now going into the statistics, enterprise value of 42 billion and market cap 43.85, which results in a net cash position of 1.41 billion. That's plenty to operate for now. Working capital is 5.57 billion. Now the efficiency metrics and the margin metrics are gonna look negative because the company is not making money at the moment. It's still in its growth stage and I would argue if we look at this little chart here that it's entered its kind of exponential growth stage in the last couple of years. It hasn't let up, but the price um, probably expected a little bit more growth than it's going to be delivering. Now, after look at the financial and statistics, um, there's one thing that you got to know about this company, which is, of course, if you don't know already, its co-founder, chairman, president is Jack Dorsey, who also was the same thing for Twitter. He stepped down to focus, I guess, on this company, which is fine. So he's a capable guy, but also it's a bit of a risk taker. So he got, you know, really into crypto at some point. But now it seems like by reading the news articles that Square is refocusing again on small business, which I like to see. You know, just reading over some of the uh, headlines here. I think that the things they list in the profile here is what they should be focused on, really. 
you know, contact contactless uh, payments, you know, magnetic stripe cards like Square terminals and cash apps and uh, you know, and all kinds of point of sale stuff and small business like checkout things and gift cards. They they list all that in their company profile and as long as they're focusing on that, I am a big fan of the company. All right, I'm actually a fan of this one. Uh, if you watch my shallow dives, like I'm not, I don't normally speak positively of companies <laughs> in general. Because I like cash generating companies and this company does not generate cash however it is a growth company um, and it's not supposed to and it, it has shown the ability to generate cash before uh, so I'm not too worried about that what I am worried about is just valuation right I would think that at 15 billion revenue this year let's let's take a look at the numbers again so I'm I'm not talking out of my behind. So, yeah, so 17.66 billion in 2021. If they manage somehow to double that or close to double, so maybe like 25 to 30 billion of revenue by the end of this year, 2022, then they would be on a pretty good upward trajectory still with a tiny bit of a slowdown. So it really depends on how that, those top line numbers come in for me person. Like if if it looks if it looks like they will close to double, then this stock is a buy for me. Uh, I'm looking at like an easy double in a couple of years from the seventy four dollar level. Definitely would not look at the company at two forty or whatever he topped in at, clocked in at uh, you know, in two thousand twenty one. It was 275 is no way. Obviously, it's easier to say that in retrospect. People are expecting... I didn't own the stock then, though. I don't own it now either. Uh, but people are definitely expecting some more growth um, to continue, the exponential growth to continue, but it obviously didn't. Did, I, did it deserve this big of a beatdown? Probably. I mean, it, it, it's not like the revenue is that huge. Let's take a look at the price-to-sales ratio here. So price to sales is 2.69. That's about in line. I mean, it's nothing, you know, it's nothing mind blowing. Uh, forward price to sales 2.03. It's fine. And just like PayPal, if we look at the PayPal, let's take the PayPal. Let's look at PayPal statistics. It's kind of like the future of Square. The P ratio of PayPal is still high. So the company is uh, valued well relative to the money that's coming in. And the price sales ratio of PayPal is 4.22. It's actually worse. Um, so if you ask me whether just based on the numbers, I would rather own Square or PayPal, it might actually be Square. Even though I have a leap on PayPal, which is kind of strange considering PayPal is making money and Square is not. The Square is growing, PayPal is growing revenue. It's a much more predictable company than Square. Uh, it's the main competitor. That's why I'm looking at it. It's basically like a mirror, you know, it's like a, it's cousin or brother or sister um, that competes with it all the time. So net income actually dropped 341 in uh, the last quarter, but they're consistently making money. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, shares outstanding. I think they've actually been buying up shares. So a little bit of shares over a long period of time. So it's fairly unchanged. So that's a plus. Um, but it's not a plus if you don't have the money for it. <laughs> so let's take it some more, look at some more statistics here. So we can look at a future like this on Square where it's PE is 55 or around a $50 area. Um, its margins are probably going to look similar too. Gross margins high, but then the profit margin is only 7.79. I can see this type of company dropping profit margins down to like the 5% range even. Um, I think inherently this type of business is very like skimmy, right? You just skim a little bit off the top here and there. Like it's not, it's not a high margin business, so you need a lot of volume. So the future of Square really, it, it's 
kind of like this it's going to be a never-ending grind to compete and grab more market share of the transaction volume out there if they do a well enough job and they they create some kind of mode for themselves so they can raise their margins fine but my biggest fear for the company is that they're going to end up being in this like competitive game forever and they're never actually going to get to the point where they're making money i mean they've been around for some time not as long as paypal but they've been around i mean let's take a look at how far this chart goes at least 2015 i don't know when they ipo'd but it doesn't matter like the point is the company's been around for a while and it might get stuck in this war and i can see that i can see companies like this you know maybe there, there'll be even another player that comes out and competes with with payments i mean you know other companies like uh, facebook and apple like these giants are going into payments and they're you know even google is going into payment like everybody and their mother's going into payments keep in mind they're not only competing with PayPal and all these players that I just mentioned. They're also competing with things like Visa and MasterCard and you know, all kinds of uh, you know transactions, Zelle, you name it. So you're competing with the best of the best and I can see them being stuck and that's the biggest risk. I can see them being stuck in this competition of always trying to expand. I do like that they're going into small business because there's not enough attention being paid to small business. Uh, all these players that I mentioned earlier kind of go from consumer to consumer or, you know, with the exception of maybe Facebook, consumer uh, consumer or um, uh, or what established business. Right. Um, but uh, the physical transaction is a little bit neglected. You know, everybody's still doing these like little very phone scanners and credit card readers and all that. That, that thing needs to get updated. Right. So uh, I do like the, the I like it a lot that they go into that niche, and that would be basically the only the main reason I would invest in the company. Um, I think that it's not crazy over par, uh, overpriced, but I would probably get into Square if I were to invest in it at a lower price. I may not get it, but the thing is because of the risk of getting stuck in this, you know, competitive landscape forever. I think that that risk is not being priced in. You know, what's being priced in right now, even at this lower level, is this revenue number here continuing to accelerate at similar rate, you know, for the next five, 10 years or something. Um, so or at least a few years and then tapering off. So I think there's just... Um, you know, I think this they're in a tough business. I like that they're trying to carve themselves a niche, but it's just the risk and, and the the difficulty um, is still there, even if they're the best in town, which I don't know if they are or they're not. Um, you know, PayPal is it's, going to come after their internet transactions as well, and It'd be brutal. So, I think there are better opportunities in the market. Uh, if this drops, like if this halves, then yeah, sure, I think it's worth a shot. Like especially buy some long dated leaps or something like that. That would be good. Um, if you are just a believer in the company and you know the industry better than I do or anyone else, then you can probably take a shot. It's not a horrible valuation. Um, like I said, I like the company. It's one of the rare companies I like. Usually I do these company reviews and I actually just crap on the company because. You know, they've got so many like red flags and things that just don't go their way that it's it, you would have to have a really good informational edge in order to like put somewhere into work. But this company is actually, I think, legit and I think it has a chance. But like I said, I'm just fearful that it gets stuck in market share war forever and never actually monetize um, and start flipping consistent profits that investors can enjoy because ultimately. As an investor, we want that money back with interest, right? So um, when is that going to happen? I mean, if you're an early investor and you want money back from the company, I don't think they're anywhere near issuing dividends, obviously, uh, or share buybacks. <laughs> I mean, look at this, right? Their shares keep getting diluted. It's not like they're, um, they're buying back shares. They've been selling shares every single year. So we're far, far away from that. In order to, for the, um, oops, 
for the this is not what I want to show you know for the investors to be happy this is what I want to show share is outstanding all right see they've been selling shares every single year without without an exception so in order for investors to be happy like this trend has to eventually turn around it's at least a few more years away and think about early investors they've been waiting forever to get their money back right the only way they can get money back now is by selling the shares so anyway i i do like the company i think it's risky um if, if the company drops by like 30 40 50 percent i think it's perhaps worth a leap but of course this is not investment advice you got to do your own due diligence etc um i'm not responsible for any market moves that you make out there all right i think that's it for square i like to do these company videos during the weekends uh during the week sometimes do one two or five depending on how much free time i have portfolio updates where i share my full account with you and um where I am in the journey to turn like 30,000 into a million or something. So that's my goal here. So if you want to check those out, feel free. I will be looking forward to making another company video. That's it for now. Peace out.